Hey everybody, Ben here for the Ben Podcast and welcome to Blood Bowl Formations Orc Setup. So we are looking at every team in Blood Bowl, whether it's from the rulebook, the Teams of Legend PDF or the expanded NAF teams. And really what we're doing is we're looking at some of the best and most logical setups for those teams. Whether you are kicking or receiving, we're going to talk you through some good ways to position your players at the start of those drives. So if you are planning on playing with Orcs or, you know, your best friend's picked up an Orc team and you really want to know how to beat them, this video will kind of show you the strengths and weaknesses for defense and for offense with the Orc team. So Orcs are a very strong team. They are not the strongest. They are definitely kind of a mid to heavy team because they've got an incredible amount of brilliant positionals. Now the new addition they've been uh, they've gone and received um, animosity, which is going to slow them down for handing off the ball. But realistically, that's going to happen once or twice a game, and it's just a cheeky two plus to make it work. So we're going to ignore animosity here because that doesn't massively play into the orc playbook. If they were a passing team or a speed team, then definitely. But when it comes to orcs, these guys like to crump things. So let's have a breakdown of the positionals that we got here. Because they are, you know, at the same letter, we've got B for blocker and we've got Z for blitzer. So Z for blitzer because blitz... There you go, makes sense. We've got linemen here and there is an orc thrower. So those classic hardcore orc coaches out there just ignore it. Replace it with a goblin. Replace it with a lineman. Whatever you like. We'll talk about the thrower now very, very quickly. So the thrower appears in some of these setups and it is up to you whether you take the thrower or not. A lineman does just a good a job. Same speed, same agility. Worse armor on the thrower. So if you do have a thrower and you have to replace a lineman with the thrower on defense... It does leave you a bit more vulnerable because that armor, what, armor 9 plus instead of armor 10 plus is a significant chunk of difference there. Anyway, so when you see thrower, just think actually that can be a lineman instead. So one benefit of the orc team is because you've got four orc blockers, big and blockers now, you have a ton of strength to start on the line. So the first defense we're going to look at here is the strong line defense. Now this one is fantastic if you're playing against a mid-range or fast team that is weaker than yourself. So not necessarily the best thing to line up with against a Lizardman or Ogres or teams like that. But honestly, humans, Skaven, Elves, loads of teams out there, the strong line is going to give you really, really good starting point. So there's two elements to this defense, as there always is. The first is the war on the line of scrimmage, the line of slaughter here. You've got four big and blockers. That's four guys with strength four. So to get profitable blocks on, an, on a sort of standardized strength three team, your opponent is going to have to dump three players to one to get a profitable block. So at some point, we're going to look at what we call rolling the line. They are going to struggle to roll the line here against that big and blocker front thing. So they're going to have to have a dude there and they're going to have to one support there, one support there to get two die block. Now they can clear the edges off by moving and activating and putting a piece there along with that piece there and that piece there. And then they can start to roll, but it's going to take a massive deployment of forces. And if the team is lighter, they're going to need to protect the ball as well. So actually, if they overcommit to the line of slaughter or just stack one side, what you're going to end up with are some free blockers here to react with. And realistically, if they take down a strength four piece with armor 10 plus, it's going to get back up again the next turn and it's going to be in base contact. And being in base contact is exactly where those guys like to be. They're moving five now as well, which gives them even better positioning on defense. So the strong line... You can deploy against someone who is more vulnerable than you are because they are not going to necessarily want to commit. And that if they do want to commit, they're going to take a ton of resources. And once they have spent that ton of resources dominating your line or just avoiding it, you have got a fantastic contingent in your secondary here. You've got one, two, three, four orc blitzers with some linemen as well. So let's say they ignore your front line here they ignore your defensive line and they want to go cruising through your line so they're going to go for a breakthrough their best angle is to put support there support there blitz here and clear that blitz around and go down once they've done that their best case scenario is a launch pad about halfway down the pitch they are not getting through and tagging this guy. There's no way they're tagging this guy. And this blitzer probably getting back up again. So what you immediately do have is one, 
two, three, four, five. You might have to have a go for it to tag the corner of a cage, but then this Blitzer is just going to come in and clear. Now, Blitzers having six squares of movement means that one, two, three, four, five, six, each of these Blitzers in the uh, middle zone can cover the entirety of the middle zone and their own wide zone. So even if your opponent does go for a breakthrough on the edge against one of your Blitzers, that other Blitzer there is going to be able to cover this entire section of the pitch and this blitzer is going to be able to cover this entire section of the pitch so you've got a really solid bit of range there and the thing is they're going to have to overcommit to one side to get that blitz against this guy anyway they can take out the blitz they can take out the lineman with a little bit more ease but because you've got overlapping uh, overlapping tackle zones they're going to struggle to get more than a two die block and they're going to struggle to do that without applying one two blitz three resources no matter who they go against and if they're using three guys on one of your guys that means you're playing a game of 11 versus 9 at that point and that is going to play in your favor because you've got four blitzers in the backfield you've got some linemen there and while that's all happening these big and blockers they're not going down and if they go down they're getting back up and if they start that next turn with people in base contact you have got two or three free two or three dice blocks and that is just going to massively play into the attrition game. And the strong line defense here is not one you're going to use all that often, but you can. And you can see that even if, even if you overcommit to your line, which is what you're doing here, it is going to pay dividends for your team. Next up, we've got a variant of the anchor defense. So we've just looked at strong line where you commit your blockers to that line of scrimmage. What if you want to hold them back as linebackers? Well, the orc box is going to give you a massive amount of flexibility when it comes to dealing with a mid to heavy team against you. So if you are willing to give up that line of scrimmage or you're very aware that even if you commit all your black orcs, they are going to be able to outmuscle you. So like I said, the black orc team, lizardman team, Honestly, Chaos can pull this off as well, and teams that are mid-range with a big guy will also have a bit of an advantage to clear out your line. Just ignore the line. Just give them the line of scrimmage. Your Black Hawks, sorry, your big and blockers get to then play a bit of fluid defense. Now, you are sacrificing three linemen. That's what they're for, but the great thing about the Orc linemen is although they're only movement five, that armor 10 means that when they go down, they are getting back up again which is fantastic for this team because these guys all they want to do is get knocked down and not get stunned because they're going to stand right back up again and literally just hold these zones so it's going to be easy for your opponent to roll this line they're going to be able to push 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 and clear them out but that's going to take five or six activations and five or six players at which point all they can realistically do is sweep your line across and then back up here maybe secure the ball and that's the two different types of offense that you can tackle with the Orc team. The one we just saw is a team that's more vulnerable than you, but is fast. This one here is a team that is potentially as strong or stronger than you, but is going to have to spend their second activation securing the ball and not advancing it. So Dwarf teams, Lizardman teams, the teams that are going to... Well, Undead is a cracking example, actually. The teams that are going to be able to win that line of scrimmage, but the other thing they need to do is secure that ball in the backfield that's fine you get to let them have a few blocks on your linemen that's all right if they go for a blitz the best thing they're going to be doing is potentially a support here and a two die blitz on a blitzer and the great thing about this is where sorry that's a blocker they're going to have to put in a ton of supports one two and blitz down against that black orc and if they do they are likely to end up well guys, somewhere around about here and being round about here, if they end up there, is going to get them a is going to get you a profitable block against them either with a blacken or a blitzer there, which is going to benefit you as a free block on the next turn. Now they can tag you, but honestly, if they want to tag your blitzer and your black orc again, you're going to get free blocks and then you've got this contingent in the middle which is going to take some work to tag in place. So the Orc box is useful against those teams that are going to have to dominate the line and then fall back to form a cage or to secure the ball. And what that allows you to do is just hold this zone and then you can react. Now, big and blockers at movement five, one, two, three, four, five. You can see they actually get a massive amount of range now. This one's going to take a punch or one on each side is going to get tagged and then potentially take a punch if they want to commit that resource. Then you've got this dude here that can swoop out any way you like. And you've got blitzer forward to counter the line. You've got a blitzer here to play safety if you want. And you've got these two blitzers which are likely to be left untagged as well. Then you are in a great place to counter strike. If they want to come down here and send a Saurus and another Saurus and take a, a big one on 
This Blitzer comes around here, gets a support, and gets you the two die free block. And then you kind of build your own line of slaughter here as a fullback position. The vulnerability of the Orc box will be if a fast opponent is willing to sacrifice players, they can tag your guys here. But honestly, if you, <laughs> as an Orc player, starting a turn with vulnerable players in contact with your Black Orcs, with your big and blockers or your blitzers is a really good thing. So the orc box here, you give the line of scrimmage up, it just means you've got eight combat ready pieces to deploy exactly how you want to. But if you need to deploy in a kind of stall defense, you can do so as well. So we've seen the strong line where we force them to own the line of scrimmage. Here you are allowing them to take the line of scrimmage to build a stronger secondary here. Now, there's a couple of things you can do, and it depends on whether you want the Black Orc on the edge or the Blitzer on the edge. So in this situation, they can tag, tag, blitz this Blitzer out, and then they can bubble through. But like we saw earlier, then you've got Black, uh, Biggin, Biggin, Blitzer. You've got an absolute ton of defense here. You can swap these positionals around. So put the Black Orc on the edge. If you're up against an opponent that doesn't have Frenzy, that Black Orc is not going anywhere if he's here. And then your Blitzer there is kind of semi-protected. It's going to take a lot of work for your opponent to clear out the Black Orc and then drop in to tag these players. And if they do, they've committed that resource and their breakthrough is going to be really, really kind of fragile to be honest with you guys so you've got one two three four five six again with both these blitzers tagging the um everything but the wide zone you've got a ton of coverage there so that's one two three blitzers can strike anywhere here and on both sides and because of the positioning they're going to have to clear this black orc out clear this big and blocker out to even tag this blitzer so the strength of the chevron defense is yeah sure they can clear out the side but they're going to struggle then to tag the players that are going to be there to strike exactly where you want them to so this is an offense that is very useful against something like a skaven team or a team that's going to go fast um in that situation then the big one on the side here is going to make it very difficult for them to get profitable blocks and that's the adjustment here is if you're willing to give them the side because they're slow but strong let them do it because you're going to have a good counter strike if they are fast but weak put the strong player on the edge and just control these zones because they're not going to be able to break through so the chevron defense is going to be really useful if there's three turns to go you need to stop them from scoring you just line up they either come through the middle in which case you can collapse upon them or you can position to the side here and make them fight their way through and i gotta show off the column defense again it's such a useful defense so if you are up against someone who just is looking to break through but is also quite a slow but strong team the great thing about the org team is if you want to cost them turns this is going to stop them that the only route here is through the middle here now to do that they can do it and they can do that by clearing out one of these linemen but like we just said you're going to be collapsing this entire like third line against them and with the big and blockers being on the front here it's going to be very difficult for your opponent to tag your uh, blitzers in the backfield so really useful if you if you if you just want to allow your opponent to come halfway up the pitch and then collapse in on them you are, they are really genuinely going to struggle to score because there is no breakthrough here except through going through the center and if they spend resource going through the center they are not going to have the resource to tag your reserve players and in fact, in that situation, they're going to do they're going to struggle to do anything other than potentially tag these players here and maybe these ones here. And if they do that, you get free blocks there from your big ones to block out the blitzers. And then you've got four blitzers uh, that are not getting attacked and they're going to be able to counter strike beautifully. So column defense, while normally you think about it as the elf defense against a heavy team, it is going to be really useful against a mid range team or a strong team here because you're big ones can go up against most things and it's going to cost your opponent extra activations to move to support and extra players to put in those supports so you're going to end up winning the numbers game and with your armor you're going to have the numbers game anyway and the last one to show off when it comes to defense with orcs this is the one i really hate as a skaven coach so cheeky skaven two to three turn touchdown involves basically blitzing somebody off the edge running down here creating a launch pad and your opponent having one blitz onto the corner and then normally it's like a two plus maybe two dodges for a touchdown which is great odds and incredibly soul destroying for your opponent but black orcs big and blockers why why um big and blockers end that 
if you've got a Skaven team or a fast team that doesn't have a strength 5 piece, so this is where the Rat Ogre comes in handy on a Skaven team, but it costs two gutter runners, so tricky one. How do you even go through this? Because of the way the tackle zones here are stacked with these strength 4 players, there is no way to go through on a blitz. What you have to do is clear out this line and then put a dude there, put a dude there and blitz there to even break through. That's the best angle you've got is somehow clearing out the line and getting enough players that are fast to go four squares deep to get two dice on your reserve blitzers. And what that does do is that leaves you four blitzers in the midfield, in your backfield, along with two big and blockers on the side and the real strength of this is that if you best situation here one support there one kind of marking player there and a blitz here to get one dice on a black orc that is a real tool order so i love this defense if you are going up against someone who's trying to score quickly yeah it's going to get one player on one player situations but look at this like please just try and find a great way through here without putting a ton of resource into it and i know these guys are slow but that's fine because they're massively strong i love strong wide zone defense for orcs against somebody who's trying to score quickly because they are going to have to expend a ton of resource to try and break through and it isn't going to work and then you've just got most of a team here to just swoop in and punch them wherever you want to it's magic so I love Orcs on defense. I apparently don't like playing against them, which is interesting actually, because I hadn't considered how much I didn't really like playing against Orcs until I sat down and looked through my games and looked through the playing. Well, I played a bunch of games with Orcs as well. Their defense is really solid. I really, really, really like Orcs. So they are not bad on offense either. Okay, the advantage here is the big and blockers are now movement five. They're strength four, movement five. Their blitzers are strength three, blitz, uh, sorry, block and movement six, edge three plus. You've got some average players here with the linemen as well, but the armor is a massive advantage. This is a three to four turn scoring team. Okay, you can do a two turner, but it's going to cost you some go for it. So it's kind of a, a, a middle speed team at best. Four of those blitzers, though, is going to do a ton of work. And when it comes to lining up here, the 5-4-2 offense, which is one of the most standard offenses you will see here, works an absolute treat. In fact, you're kind of over committing to this line of scrimmage. Let's change that to yellow, I think. There we go. Well, green will do. So on the line, you've got four of your big big ones and one lineman in the center just for the lols. Now, if you have a troll, this is where it gets real juicy. So in the backfield, you've got two linemen, maybe a thrower if you are that kind of orc player, and you've got four blitzers, two in each of the wide zones. Now with movement six, you may be thinking one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, that's actually pretty reasonable cover for the edge blitzers there. You get an overlap square. All right, it's fine. I maybe want to be them a little bit closer to, to secure the ball. However, this is this is blitz defense. So the 5-4-2 gives you an incredibly strong line. You're going to win the line of scrimmage. And if your opponent swings a blitz, they're going to have to commit heavily to any kind of breakthrough. Anywhere here is not necessarily safe but it is a lot safer than it could be because if they're applying a lot of strength to one side, it means that the rest of these guys are going to be completely untouched. And even if your opponent sneaks through with two players and secures the ball, you've got six about to come in and crump them a treat. So that's pretty sweet. So the great thing here with the backfield is you've got these guys who are both movement five, which isn't brilliantly fast, but as you can see, it covers a massive amount of the pitch. So that'll be about that as well. When it one, two, three, four, five, yeah. It covers all of this. And then you've got four blitzers there to move. So if the ball ends up here, you can bring these across to support and you can bring these down to secure and these up here to collect. And then you go and win the line of scrimmage. So the vulnerability here is that you can end up separating your offense. If you've got a deep kick, you don't need to commit everybody. If you've got a deep kick, you can just bring the lineman and your thrower down there and still just hold this line. Because if your turn ended with your setup like this it's exactly the same as if your opponent had pulled off a blitz and this 542 is built specifically to avoid having a blitz result go terribly wrong or at least to make your opponent work hard at it the obvious thing here is that you've got the option to block off the line as well with the edge biggins so simply having this lineman and this black orc stops these guys from potentially giving much support and even if this is a strength four piece this guy here as your marking player and your plus one 
gives you two dice. So you can clear this one out and then this big one is free as well. So if you need to drop back and start caging in the center, you can do so. If you want to take him on a cheeky two die blitz for the lols, you can do that as well. But what it realistically means is you pop him away, he stays in place. You've got two dice there with the lineman, pop him away, follow up, two on a black orc, big one, blocker, bub. On a bub, that's what I'm going to say now. And it gives you kind of two edge guys there free where you can fall back, make a cage. You can consolidate in, it doesn't matter. The, the, the core thing here is secure the ball, dominate the line of scrimmage, and then just go score a touchdown through your opponent. They're not going to stop you. And because Orcs do have good agility, good speed, good blitzers on the edge, you can deploy them as tight ends. And if you want to go 7-4, so if your opponent deploys pretty wide against you, even if they are a mid to heavy team themselves, like Saurus and things like that, they're probably not going to deploy any more than four or five players on the line. And by having these blitzers on the edge, it's going to give you the supports for your big uns, your bobs, <sighs> bubs, to go uh, two die to your opponent wherever they go. So even if they deploy five wide here, um, having these blitzers on the edge is going to give you the two dice there and then you can block the entire line in and collapse and you still have these two blitzers free and because of the way the tackle zones work there is still no clear way for your opponent to come through on a blitz. It does leave you vulnerable because it's very easy to pop one dude to the side here and then swoop on in to collect the ball. But like we said before, if you do that, all you've got to do is move these guys into Counter-Strike and you've still got seven very strong players on the line there. So all you have to do then is filter back and you're going to end up with a pretty horrible Death Star of Armor 10 Strength 4 slash Block Pieces in the middle there. So your opponent, all they've really done is sell two of their players, two to three of their players on a blitz that's really just separated their team and allowed you to kick the heck out of them. We've got two more to go, guys. Sorry, I know this one's running a little bit longer, but Orcs are actually very malleable. So another one that I think you've got to show off because it's something that Orcs can pull off brilliantly, unlike quite a lot of teams, and that's running out the clock. Okay, if you want to clock block your opponent, and by that I mean you're one nil up, okay? They're receiving. Um, or, you know, it's 2-1 and you've just scored to win. Maybe they forced you and it's second half. You're about to win the 2-1 grind, but you had to score earlier than you wanted to and your opponents... No, actually, you, you, you've you gone in, you've turned them over, it's 1-0 at the half. What you want to do now is secure the ball for a few turns and just buy yourself some time. Now, what you can do here on the offense is put three linemen on the line. Give away the line of scrimmage on offense. And if you look at the way we've deployed our team here, you've got four bubs just in the center zone. You've got a cage ready to go. You've got two blitzers on the side, and what that does is create this wall here of tackle zones so that on a blitz, no one's getting through. And these guys being strength four and having assisting tackle zones there means that even if they clear that guy out, they're going to have to go through tackle zones. It's going to take a lot of work to get anywhere. And because you've got this insane coverage of tackle zones in the center, the ball is going to have to land right here. They're going to have to blitz a strength four player off and collect and then they're just standing in range of three bubs and four blitzers. That is horrific. So let's say they don't get the blitz and the ball lands here. The whole point of this strategy is to burn out the clock. You bring a blitzer up to grab the ball. You've got the bubs there ready to just form a cage. And you've got three floating blitzers around it as well. What you'll end up with is about 800 gold pieces worth of combat troop in the middle of your backfield. And then all you've got to do is cage up and move forward. And with four blitzers and four bubs, you are going to struggle to struggle with that. So running out the clock is a great option for Orcs. And if you're not looking to score in three or four turns, you're looking to score in six and make them come to you. Because what they're going to have to do is tag your cage and just allow you to make probably a ton of two die blocks. And that is a fantastic place to be for an Orc team, because if your block goes wrong, your armor is so high, it's going to probably be fine. And one blitzer on his own is great. And one blitzer surrounded by four bubs and three other blitzers is fantastic. So the run out of the clock here is really, basically, you've got a pre-built cage. And wherever this ball's going, you've got four combat troops within a really safe distance of it. This is horrifying for mid to light teams, because you've basically just started with a cage and now it's all on them to throw their troops at you to slow you down last one for the orcs here is the throw goblin touchdown so we've got a couple of players here we haven't seen yet because most of the time orcs don't need them but you can upgrade 
sort of. You can take a goblin and you can take a troll. You can take a few goblins actually. So what this is here is a pretty decent map for a one turn touchdown. It's two all. It's one all. You've got a chance to win the game here or tie. Put your thrower in the backfield just below the sweet spot. Put your blitzers down and winging here and to the sides here. Your four bubs on the line. They're going to hold the line. You've got TZs in place here so that your opponent cannot filter through on a blitz because you've got dudes everywhere. So even if the ball lands here and they roll a blitz, they're going to have to sweep in and clear at the same time using all of their activations to do so. It is risky, but throw teammates always risky. But what you've got fundamentally is a goblin in base contact with a troll. The troll is not in a tackle zone, so it's going to have no modifiers. And all you've got to do is hope the ball lands basically one, two, three, four, five, anywhere here. Okay? Anywhere here. And you've got a very simple pick up and deliver to the goblin. And away you go with trying to roll a bunch of fives. Like, it's a real stretch play, but if you are looking to go for it, you can do. And to be honest with you, having a troll on the orc team is great as you develop up. Because then you end up with one strength five mighty blow piece, four strength four pieces, and four block pieces. Alright, that's just fantastic. That, that, that is almost unchallenged for strength in Blood Bowl. It might actually be. I think it might be. Um, and then, yeah, you've got a thrower who is useful for sure hands. So if you're a thrower hater, this may not be great for you. But this is the exact time that that comes in handy. So four blitzers, four black orcs, and a troll makes a great team. You've got a goblin there to just be your kind of fowler and your trick play piece. And this is your trick play piece. And as far as one turn touchdowns go, it's not bad odds. Really like this. It is scarily effective. And because orcs just are so focused on attrition and warfare... Just your opponent busting out that one turn touchdown move for the cost of a 40k goblin is real scary because if you let them score on turn 7, the orc team is quite capable of scoring in two turns and going into the next half equalised. Genius. Absolutely superb. Anyway, I'm going to wrap up here. I know there was a ton to look at with orcs, but that is because they are so versatile and so strong. Animosity came in and made everybody question whether or not they're tier 1 or not. Humans are more obviously sort of fast and able to score touchdowns because of that passing plus and things like that. But realistically, four bubs, four blitzers, potential of a troll as well. The orc team is just potentially the master of the grind. And these offenses and these setups, you can see how quickly you can bring that pressure to bear. And if you can envelop your opponent with a bunch of blitzers and a bunch of bubs, it is not going to end up well for them. And I have rekindled my love for orcs, especially because my Blood Bowl 2 ended up with black scheme with pink dots. And I'm just looking at this thinking, this is awesome. So I think an orc team is on the cards once I finish painting up all the teams for the Bonehead Championship. Anyway, guys, please let me know what you think of these. If I've missed some out, if you found some vulnerabilities because you've done a great job so far of saying, actually, Ben, deploy that guy one left. You'll be better off because that's useful learning and that's what we're here to do. Um, anyway, thanks very much for watching. We're going to disappear. We'll be back soon with more Blah Blah content. Happy blocking. Thanks very much for watching. We really appreciate your support. If you want to support the show even further, please like and subscribe. It really helps us out. Or come and join us in our Patreon uh, link below where you get early access to our content and monthly competitions. See you later.